we'll talk now about exsanguination. The uh, limb elevation will take out about 45% of the blood, even if you hold it for 10 minutes. S mark will take out about 65%. This is assuming that uh, the doctor, technician, ate a good breakfast. Hemoclear takes out nearly everything. The blood that stays in is inside the bone marrow. We can't take it out. Is this important? I'm not going to talk about the field and the bleeding. I'm going to talk about real physiology today. We all know the story about grandma who comes for a knee replacement. She has a successful operation. She now can walk to the grocery store, but unfortunately she doesn't remember where it is. Cognitive deficit after knee replacement is a common issue. 40% in one week. 18% three months. These are huge numbers. Now, Usually those are not severe deficits and you identify them by test, but nevertheless these are important side effects of an otherwise very successful procedure. Doctors, surgeons like to blame it on the anesthesiologist. Not enough oxygen, too much uh, uh, anesthesia, blood pressure too low, blood pressure too high, all kinds of stories. But I'm going to submit to you today that the anesthesiologist is innocent and it is something else that causes the problem. The issue is incomplete exsanguination. So what happens? If we don't take all the blood out of the limb, blood stays behind for an hour, an hour and a half. And what does that blood do during that time? Very clear. Clotting. The blood clots in the veins and the arteries, wherever it can, and it stays in the blood vessels for the duration of the operation until we open the tourniquet. And what happens to this clot when the tonic is open? Well, blood flow resumes and the clots flow into the right side of the heart. The right atrium, the right ventricle, and from there into the lung into the pulmonary circulation and we get microembolization, pulmonary embolization into the vessels of the lung. This has been documented in many papers published over the last nearly 20 years 
in the anesthesia literature, in the uh, um, orthopedics literature, and it is clear that 100% of patients have clots traversing the right atrium when the, uh, the tunica is opened and uh, for two, three, five minutes, you see a shower of small clots going through the heart. It is clear that those are fresh thrombi. It's not air, it is not cement, it is not fat. These have been clearly shown. Those clots get to the lung and block the arteries in the pulmonary circulation. And as everyone knows, we experience a drop in blood pressure, a little drop in oxygen saturation. But in most patients, this is inconsequential. The lung has a lot of reserves and can compensate for that. At least in people who don't have COPD or, or other lung diseases, which we are now naturally operating on. But this is not the end of the story. So the clots get into the right heart and into the lung. So here is our heart. And here is the right side. And here is the left side. And in majority of people, there's no connection between the right and the left. However, in many patients, there is an opening between the right atrium and the left atrium. And blood can flow from right to left provided that the pressure in the right side is greater than the pressure on the left. Normally this doesn't happen. This only happens when we are embryos, when we are inside the mother's womb. However, when we block or partially block the exit of blood from the right side of the heart into the lung, the pressure in the right side is rising and blood can flow through this opening, which is, as you all know, called the patent foramen ovale. And Already in 1999, it was clearly shown that in 60% of all patients, when you open the tunica and release the blood flow into the leg, you see a shower of emboli going through the circus of villis using a transcranial Doppler, a probe put on the side of the head, you can see emboli going through the uh, blood vessels of the brain. Now this is important. This is important because the brain does not have a huge uh, um, uh, reserve as the lung does. And in a more recent study, it was shown that in 5 out of 22 patients, you could document by MRI small infarcts in the brain, strokes in the brain after knee replacement that were not there in MRIs taken before. So, we now have indirect evidence that puts 
the suspicion, not on the um, um, anesthesiologist anymore, but on the fact that the current standard of care is associated with incomplete exsanguination. We are now in the process of starting a study to show that the nearly complete exsanguination by Hamaclear prevents this embolization in the brain and reduce the cognitive deficit that is so often seen in patients undergoing total knee arthroplasty. Thank you.